Brown? I, I, I have several several thoughts, and I'm very much aware that Maddie is, Maddie is here. Um, and I, I don't, I, I want to talk as if you were a full adult, and uh, I hope you understand. Um, What I didn't understand, and I don't think my children understood, when we were very young, and I was a young mother, that for many years I would be fine, and then I would have uh, a time when I was, I guess my children would think I was crazy. I mean, I was re highly reactive, very angry, very insecure, very frightened, and that would go on for could go on for a couple of years and then um, I'd be better again and uh, I can now trace a lot of those episodes. So my children, namely your mom and, and uh, Aunt Pam and Uncle Bill, had a mother who could be a very good mother and a mother who could also be a really uh, very, very difficult, insecure and frightened mother. And it wasn't until quite recently, and I'm a pretty old lady, that I found out that I have uh, what is on the spectrum of bipolar disorder. It's a, it's a, it's a big spectrum, and I have a very slight case of bipolar disorder. And that this is something that my father had, and that it runs in my family. I have some cousins that have that as well. And that's the bad news. But the good news is that for the first time in my life, I had three things that saved my life, literally saved my life. One was a husband who never gave up on me and wouldn't let me give up on myself. So, if something wasn't working and I got despairing, he would say, we'll find something else. It just means that this doesn't work. We'll keep looking for the thing that does work. We're not giving up. And this went on for seven years. During those seven years, I saw my children. I tried as much as I could not to let them know what was going on. I saw you. I didn't let you know what was going on. I didn't, I really tried to the best of my ability to keep it to myself. And all I can say is, I'm a person that doesn't give up. I am a person who doesn't give up. And I'm married to a man who doesn't give up and would never give up on me. And with all this persistence, we found the right medicines that could help me and the right treatment for me. And so for the last few years, I have been feeling well, I have been feeling happy, I have been feeling joy, I have been feeling the world is a wonderful place and I didn't know those feelings. I didn't know true joy. I didn't, I knew excitement, but I didn't know joy. I knew what it was not to feel sad, but I didn't feel well, and I feel well. And I know I can count on myself tomorrow to feel well, and the day after that to feel well. And I wasn't able to count on that before, but now I can count on it. So here I am. And I'm 80 years old, and I think to myself, I got it. I got here. Never mind that it took 75 years. I got it. I'm here. I did it. I know. I now know what most people feel like most of the time, you know. And through all that time, I worked, and I, I, I mean, I led a normal life. You wouldn't necessarily have known that there was a problem with me unless you lived with me, like. <laughs> Uncle Bill and Aunt Pam and your mom did, but if you were just an outsider looking in, you'd think everything was fine. 
And I could tell you more, but I'm not going to. I just want to say that there's something about perseverance, about saying, I'll never give up on myself. I just won't give up on myself. And I'll do what it takes. And having a partner who says, it's okay, it's okay for you to feel bad. I'll hug you. And here's a big strong hug. And tomorrow we'll go out and find something else and see if it helps. So, when you're finding a partner in your life, somebody who's there for the bad times and somebody who's there for the good times. I feel really lucky. I feel lucky. I feel lucky that I have the children that I have and that I have the family that I have. And I want to talk just a little bit about my brother and sister. When we were growing up, we didn't have a relationship. Of course, each one of us in our own way was running away from the house. So we were all off running. And we didn't have time to spend together. Building a relationship was something that I think, I don't know who started it. I really don't. I, I tend to think it was my brother, but I'm not sure if it was my brother. I think he may have started it, but it certainly was responded to by my sister and me. And it's taken us years, years to, to build the kind of closeness that we have. Um, first of all, we're all much more solid people as people. So we can offer more to each other. And we've also made it a point to keep this relationship going. And I think that it will help, I'm hoping that it will help my two daughters and my son to, to somehow realize it can be done can be done. I really thought it was against all odds. Honestly, there were times when I was just like, ah, no, not that. But it can be done. And one of the things I think Jessica knows very well is not to take things personally. And of course, Ed says this too. You just don't take things personally. You realize that when people are talking, they're always talking about themselves. So you can't get hurt as readily if you don't take them. So today I'm a very happy person. And the only thing that makes me unhappy is that I can't start it all over again feeling well. But I'm, I am grateful for whatever time I have left that I'm gonna have a happy life, that these are happy days. And I just want to say thank you to my husband because I really never have thanked him in public. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for hosting us. That's my transforming experience. And now.